is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to Eddie in Boca Raton. Hey, Eddie, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how are you, man? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. It is a treasure to have TFNN every hour during the trading day to be there to help you, to guide you, and even to give you some peace of mind or like that, that somebody else is there with you while you're, while you're trading this crazy market, either well, up or down. Well, listen, we appreciate you growling prowling with us out here because we wouldn't be out here, folks, if we didn't have all you guys, gals, tigers and tigresses as clients. And, you know, the market teaches you every single day, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We have five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great week and a great month, folks. Kicking into August, baby. Always do your best, but don't overdo. When you overdo, you deplete your body and you go against yourself, and it will take longer to accomplish your goal. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials trading up 12. NASDAQ is down one. SP is off six and a half. Gold contract trading up 440 at 17.86 an ounce. We got silver up 10 cents, 20 dollars, 30 cents an ounce. Light sweet crude, that's taken on the chin, down 477, 93 dollars, 85 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year note trading up six ticks, 121.11. The 30 year up 21 at 144.21 and King Dollar. King dollars down 433 ticks, trading out at 105, 469. The euro is at 102. The yen is at 131. And the British pound is at 131, 122 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. Let's go over to the world of direction and our man, Mr. Dave Mazza. Dave is a head of product and a managing director Director at Direction Shares, Dave Mazza. Welcome back to TFNN. Hey, happy to be back. Listen, we got to talk about the bond market. And folks, inside the bond market, so as you come over to our website at TFNN, you can hit that direction banner, you're going to bring it up, and we're going to talk about uh, the TMF and the TMV, depending whether you're bullish or bearish. Um, you know, it's pretty amazing, Dave. I mean, this is, you know, we, we hear everyone talking about that rates are going up. And there's no doubt the Fed fund rate has been going up, uh, but the 10-year note has been going down. <laughs> I mean, we peaked out at 3.4 and we're 2.6 right now. Pretty wild, man. So let's talk a little bit about if you can explain both of these. And, and I've traded both of these. These are great trading vehicles, folks. Uh, this is the, you know, the direction 20-year plus uh, bear or bull fund. The bear fund is the, you know, the TMF, the bear. Uh, the bull fund is TMF, that's what I like now. The bear fund is TMV. So pretty wild. It's pretty diabolical, isn't it, that the Fed's going up and the market's sending the rates down? Yeah, I think what we're seeing from a macro point of view is uh, a, a pretty difficult environment uh, for rates. And uh, that's, that's an insight that, that is uh, not insightful. But I'm being facetious here because... We were in expectation, again, before we had concerns about economic growth, that we were going to see the Federal Reserve embark on a path of rising interest rates because inflation was higher. Yes. And what that could have done, especially because uh, even if we have the White House uh, set aside politics trying to redefine what a recession is, um, we know we have pretty strong, strong uh, job growth. And of course, that could change. But for the time being, sure, we actually could have an environment where rates were rising for a good reason. We were out of COVID. The, you know, there was not fears of, of the economy being shut down again. But now what we're seeing is rates rising at the same time. Inflation remains high and economic growth, um, particularly heading into the back half of the year, is questionable. And this has hurt banks. A lot of people, again, came into the, the uh, uh, year thinking financials were going to do well. 
But as this yield curve is flattened, though, it's created this really interesting trading trading environment. And so as noted, uh, TMF and TMV provide exposure to uh, 20, 20 plus year treasuries uh, in an amplified way. So these are tools for tactical trading. What I find fascinating, uh, but it makes sense performance wise, this is one of the only areas where the bear fund, so in this case, TMV, okay. has greater assets than the bull fund, TMF. Because Ooh, um, they, wow. they came, exactly, they came into the year um, being relatively similar, but that's changed. Um, so people are really positioned on that bear side. And look, it's been, you know, if we look uh, at the, you know, at the environment, it's an interesting one because you would say, hey, right, that trade hasn't worked um, for, 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 for the most part. Um, but uh, especially, you know, especially of late, but starting the year it did. So I, I think, you know, both of the tools are there depending upon what your, what your thoughts are on, on, you know, the long bond here. A great explanation, man. I mean, I, I think this is the first time I'm trying to I, I'm trying to like think back that I've ever seen the Fed fund rate going up and the interest rates going down. I mean, and what I mean specifically, folks, you got to remember something. The Fed fund rate is bank to bank rate and they have raised it and they're going to raise it more. And what has happened in the marketplace, however, though, is that the marketplace is buying these tens. I mean, these 20s hand over fist driving the price down. So it's it's a couple of good trading vehicles there in a huge way. You know, when we look at the broad market, I, I thought it's so intriguing, Dave, that you were talking about the aspect that the bear fund actually has more than the bull fund, because that, folks, is very unusual, because, you know, the bottom line is that everyone, not everyone, I'm just saying in general, if we took a big picture, you know, the bull funds are where it's at, because on a long-term basis, gotta you remember something, Numbers are going to be higher. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what it comes down to. So when the when we're taking a look at the the, the structures in general, I mean, we have we have the the S and P's people can protect themselves with, as you just brought up, you know, the F A Z and the F A S uh, when they when they're looking at the banking structure. That banking structure is going to get interesting, Dave, right? Because, you know, the reality is that these banks still are not paying us any interest, but yet their structure because of the you know the, the basically the fed fund rate it is you know their spread should should come up somewhat yeah so you're absolutely you're absolutely right so i think yeah we haven't seen an environment where the fed is materially raising rates uh and the bond market is you know at least those trading the long bond are saying nah we, we don't right. we don't believe it uh we're already getting you know yeah you, you know powell came out a little bit more dovish last week but we're already getting other governors and folks saying, well, yeah, we're going to keep raising, but don't worry about 2023. Um, so that has put pressure on the macro side. And yeah, that, we're, people aren't seeing it in their checking accounts, right? Or saying it in their, in their, in their savings accounts, meaning because, you know, much of that is dependent upon what the short term rates are doing. And those are going up, but not enough to offset what's happening on, 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 on the inflationary side. So I think. The TMF and TMV, if those aren't on traders' uh, radars, right. they really should be because you're amplifying exposure really to what already has long duration. And they're great vehicles, man. Well, listen, we appreciate the up, up the update, appreciate the education. You have a great one, safe one. We look forward to speaking to you two weeks from today, Dave. Sounds good. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? 
Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading up 13. You get the NASDAQ up four. S&Ps are down six. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding program here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also a great newsletter. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter. Just come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go into newsletters. You're going to hit Master and Probabilities right on the right hand side. You just hit subscribe. You can get Master and Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. And you get it for one year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 at 33%. Now they all come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So as Steve says every day, you can get it for 29 days, no problem. So as you're coming over here, Check it out, you're gonna like it. Steve's got a lot of great education on that site on a continual basis. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, kind of enjoying the somewhat dry weather weekend that we had. I, I think it was probably dry up in, in your area too. It was, it was, yeah. it was a great yeah. weekend. Hot, yeah. but great. It doesn't, it's the summer. It, it, listen, it, it, it's probably hotter in Boston and New York than it was in Florida, folks, and we were breaking records, so. Yeah, you know. exactly, exactly. But yeah. it was nice to have a little bit of, a little, a little bit of dryness out there. It was. You know, so. Hey, hey, uh, hey let me ask you something. You know, the, yeah. the, the guy that won again this week, right? So he yes. won two weeks in a row, right? Tony now, Fino, yeah. Are these, now, is that the same circuit? Like, that's just the same circuit, but you don't get all the bigger golfers. You only get the bigger golfers, like at the big majors. Is that what happens? Well, when they get towards this part of the season, so oh, I think there's no, maybe okay. just there just may be one more tournament. There is, right. Be before yeah. they start the FedEx Cup. I see. So, okay. yeah, so what will happen, because because they they had the Scottish Open and British Open and yeah. the guys were, were overseas and so forth, you know, most of them that, that are inside the cut line for the FedEx right. will take a little bit of time off and, and try to hone in on some parts of their game. Cool, I get it. Okay. Tony Tony Fino, yep. you know, he's, he's been around for a long time, but has always struggled to get the ball across the goal line. Okay. Except, you know, I mean, he's been you know finished in the top five so many times so it's been very cool it's always cool to watch these guys get the ball across the goal line and you know what it does tom it, it increases their confidence yeah and it, 
in golf or really anything that we do, isn't it really all about confidence? It is. And you know, it's incredible. There's so many good young golfers, man. It's oh. unbelievable. I mean, it was fun yeah. watching. I was just curious. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, it's just amazing. I mean, that little golf ball in that little hole, it's like well, hard to get in, man, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and these guys, these guys have changed the, uh, these guys have changed, the, the younger ones have really changed the game from the standpoint of the distance that they are hitting golf balls. Yeah. You know, the driver i mean they're they're carrying the ball 300 plus yards I, you know, was, in narrow it, fairways the cantaloupe the cantaloupe he was 345 yeah, yeah, can- right was like yeah exactly yeah it was like wow 345 yeah. man <laughs> yeah I, I i love to figure out their secrets i um i have been struggling with my driver so i'll tell you the easiest way to to fix that or to try to fix it and I did it this weekend. I was up on Sunday, up in Orlando, playing golf with my brother and my uh, and, and one of my and my son. Yeah. And I, we play up at the or, or this time we played at the Grand Cypress uh, Golf Resort. Nice. And the only course, well, they actually they have two two courses now. But we played the the new course. Okay. The new course, which is really like playing the old course over in Scotland. Now the reason why I say I like to go there when I'm struggling with my game is because. It's the widest. The, the fairways are larger than what you'd see in a driving range. I see. Okay. So, so if you want to really tinker with your game, it's hard to tinker with the game in your regular courses out there. Right. You just, you know, I need, I need a wider area. And really, I think, I, I think I found, you know, what the issue was. And it's just, it just, it's a confidence thing. Right. I mean, I had no confidence in my. And you driver. should see Steve hit the ball, folks. I've seen him. I mean, he winds up like a freaking. <laughs> yeah. Well, the older age, though, you kind of got to pair things back a little bit. But look, let's say, uh, last Monday when we were on the line, uh, we were talking about how the prior Friday generated both a short-term sell signal yep. and an intermediate-term buy signal. Turns out that uh, since last Monday, both of those signals were correct. So let's take a little bit of time, take a look at what unfolded, and then where the markets are likely going. So it was Friday, July 22nd, that was the Friday, where the daily NQ generated a bear sash candle. Now, that bear sash candle was important because it was completed in an A to B equals CD pattern. That short-term uh, pattern then suggested that price would run to the oscillator and change line, one of the tools that's available that folks can uh, test and, and learn about in 29 days. It doesn't really cost them anything. And that's exactly what took place. Price pulled back to support, which was the bottom of its profile, and that oscillator and change line. That was done on July 26. The only topping pattern that's currently present, there's none. There's an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We both know that. So therefore, if we do get a bearish reversal candle, then that should set up the next uh, sell the D point pattern. And, uh, and if we do get that, that would likely bring our price target again back down to that oscillator and change line. Now that's currently printed at 12473 on Wednesday. That'll be a different figure on Friday and so forth. So, but newsletter subscribers will see this each and every uh, day and each and every morning. So in summary, Friday, July 2nd generated a bearish reversal candle that generated a sell the D point pattern. That set up a run for support, which was its oscillator and change line in the bottom of its daily profile. Support was tested and held on July 26, and that's what set up that move higher. Now, the next bearish reversal candle that forms, that'll generate the next sell the D point pattern with, again, that daily oscillator and change line being the price target again. So let's take a look at the bullish intermediate time frame signal that also formed on July 22nd. And that was this. This was the weekly time frame chart. Now I'm showing the NQ and the arrow, the blue arrow here is pointing to the bar that crossed over or closed above that oscillator and change line. So that was a that was an important thing to suggest we might get more rally. Well, if we take a look at each of the weekly equity futures charts, each of them closed above that oscillator and change line. And in the Dow specifically, the lower left out here, that was the first time in all of 22 that that had happened. That was a slight signal to you and I and everybody else out there to at least expect a rally. And the type of rallies, ones that typically last two to three weeks out there. So each of the weekly equity futures contract had also formed what I refer to as a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. These blue arrows are showing that pattern. Again, something that is taught to all subscribers. They get access to the videos that will teach them this pattern, which is really important. The NDX 100, as an example, it was lodged in 1985. Its first weekly Rhodes momentum indicator bottom took place on October 5th, 2001. I've got the blue arrow here. Yeah. That led to a TD9 count top. Again, another pattern that I teach out there uh, that we use each and every day. And that eventually, then once it got to the TD9 count top, again, a topping pattern, that, lent, that, that moved to lower lows out there. The final bottom for the 2000 bear market formed with a Rhodes, another Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern the week of October 11th. 2002. The next weekly NQ 
Roseman to Medicare bottom marked the end of the 2007 bear market. So there was one that formed in October of 2008, and then there was one more that uh, took place in March of uh, two, March 13, 2009. That blue arrow up there. Yes. So now we're dealing with the current one, the June 24, 2002 Roadsman to Indicator bottom out here. We've discussed several times how the counter trend rallies typically last two to three bars out there. Last week was bar number two. This suggests that we should get some type of short term top that forms uh, this week out there. But I'm in total agreement with you. Likely this is going to be a top. It pulls back with lighter volume into support, which would be the oscillator and change line again around the 12, 448 level. And then it likely sets up that next move higher. And where I think we're at, if we take a look at the 2007 bear market. We had two periods where there was a three month rally. Yeah. Yeah. and a two-month rally. I believe that's where we're in now. Likely takes the markets higher into some part of September, and then we have the Nike swoosh to the downside. I love it how deviant it is, man. It's unbelievable, all right? It really is. Come over to our website, folks, at TFNN. Check it out, Maximum Probability. You're going to get a great newsletter. You're going to understand exactly how Steve looks at the market every trading day. Look Thanks, forward Tom. to the market tomorrow, Steve. If you want to take advantage Thanks, of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, down 18. You get the NASDAQ off 31. S&Ps are off 14 and a half. I'm not quite sure why this is going like that. Sorry about this. We'll figure this out. Uh, inside the NDX 100, let's take a look at the strength versus the weakness. And what you're going to have out here, folks, uh, which is unusual for, uh, well, it's not unusual for Monday, but we're in window dressing. Um, you're going to have light volume. Uh, putting strength into the NDX right now, you got AMDs up 2%, PayPal's up 1.8, Verisign up. Uh, Verizon, uh, Verisign, no, Verisign's up 1.8 and uh, Kraft Heinz is up 1.7. Taken away from it. Pindua Duo is uh, down 3.5. You get CGEN off 2.5. Vertex Pharmaceuticals off 2.3. And Intuit Software is uh, down 2. We go into the 
Dow Industrials. We take a look at the strength versus the weakness. Uh, there it is, Al. Perfect. Thank you. We went to the Dow Industrials. We take a look at the Dow Industrials, and this is what you have. You have Boeing is the big winner out here inside the Dow Industrials today. That's putting 64 positive points. Home Depot, 42. Procter & Gamble, 26. And uh, Big Mac, 10. Taking away from it. You got United Health, minus 53. We got uh, Microsoft, minus 18. Chevron, minus 17. So, you know, bottom line is that, uh, you, you know, we, we got some action out here. But when you take a look at this volume, the volume's going to come up short. So it really depends on where this market closes. But I suspect what we're going to have out here, folks, is a little backing and filling. That's, you know, that's how this seems to be setting up. And we'll see how this sh shakes out. Uh, you have two weeks straight up. You, you, the, the, it's June 1st where you're trying to launch right now. Um, you know, and what ended up happening Friday, we had volume come in the marketplace and the SPY, you know, we did 87 million. You're only going to do about 61 million today. Um, you know, so it had, most of the time when you get a move like this, you're either going to build cause and go sideways, dip down a little, um, you know, and then you're going to go forward. Uh, as I said a little bit earlier, it's going to be on the pullback. If even a slight pullback to see if there's any sellers whatsoever. You know, we don't, we don't have buyers right now, okay, out here today. You know, because the bottom line is that in the queues, what's going to get interesting with the queues, if the queues do close uh, in this benchmark of uh, 314.56, that means you're going to get a pullback because we're not going to have the, um, you're not holding price, and it does, looks to me like you're not going to have the volume either. And this is light volume to take out the swing. This swing only needs 59 million. And the bottom line is that we're going to probably do about 50. You know, you're at 39 million right now. Uh, what we've already done uh, on the queues is you've got over the highs of Friday. You know, we'll see where they close over them. But the bigger benchmark is this June 1st day. That's, that's the number. And then what you're going to have, now watch this. If you're watching Tiger TV, this is pretty cool how this is set up. This is also ice. So you can see that. This is, this is a nice way that if you're always wondering what ICE is, okay, this is a Wyckoff term. I have it in the time of the trade. And what it is is that when you break out of a range, and you can see we're coming right up to the range, man. That's the bottom line. In fact, the, the range is uh, 317.45. And that swing point that we're talking about is 314.56. Um, you know, bottom line is that that's important. And the, the, this, is, this is where my head's at, Let's, so check this out. This would be the most deviant thing that the market can do if, in fact, it has made a bottom. And, and what you get is this, right? You get an acceleration up. We've had a couple of them so, thus far. Then you get that pullback. And, and remember last week, when we got that pullback last week, what had happened is this. That was a pullback without volume, and then bang, you went topside right again. And so when you get a fast pullback, with wide price spread, but no volume. Most times, man, you just flip right around and go topside once again. So we'll see how this shakes out. Uh, what's unusual out here today is that number one, you got window dressing. Number two, you have the dollar going with you. Um, and you can see that the market still can't catch the bid. So this is pretty cool how it's setting up deviance uh, in a monster way. And you could actually see it. You know, when I was looking at the market earlier today, you can actually see it that the dollar, and this is going to be cool for us going forward also, because, you know, markets always change and the correlations and relationships change. And what we had out here this morning is that you had the dollar stayed, well, here, let's go look at it. So you can see that the dollar has been weak all day, right? I'll put this intraday and you can take a look at it. So you've had a weak dollar, meaning in the context all day long, right? It started higher, but yet... Gold couldn't hold price, and the gold equities weren't taking off either. So that was telling me right off the bat that, you know what, man? This thing wants to pull back a bit because what we've seen is this. We've seen not only the aspect that, you know, the dollar is running the market. If we go back two or three weeks ago, what you had is that the dollar, the dollar was pulling back a bit and gold still wasn't moving. So where I'm going with that is that... Watching the gold equities is also a good way to get the correlation as to, okay, bottom line, where does this market want to go? Now, let's go over to the TLT because that was when we had Dave Mazer on, the head of product and managing director at Direction, okay? 
he was talking about the aspect that on the the TMV, okay, which was the bear, the bearish fund for the triple um, versus the TMF. Now it's very unusual when that this has. Uh, let, let me put it up so you can see it. T TMV. So this is the bearish three times twenty year, and you can see here what's going on is that right here this market cap. They get 484 million. So that's, when you look at this, folks, that is how many people, this is a shot position, okay? And you can see, of course, the bottom line, this thing is down $6 today, okay? Now, remember that number, 484. And then we get over to the TMF, and we take a look at it, and you're going to see in the TMF is 381 million. And that's up 92 cents. Well, the bottom line, folks, now let's go to the 10 year, because I want to show you that the 10-year the is in an ABC structure on the way up. And I want to thank uh, Jimmy uh, because he was, ex he was uh, explaining that in 1999 and 2000, when I was talking to, with Dave saying, it's really weird, I'd never remember that you had the Fed fund rate going up, but in, you know, in yield, and the market was basically driving it down, the real yield. When I say real yield, the Fed fund market rate, folks, none of us have anything to do with because you have to be a bank in order to do it, okay? The bottom line is that what runs everything is the 20-year. And you can see this 20-year, this, this man, it's in an ABC structure up. This thing wants to run up to the 124, 125 level, which is going to, if, if that's what we get, you're going to have a, a 2.110, let me pull this up. A 2.1 to a 2.14 yield, because it's right down here. here. So right now you can see this. We're two. Well, we just broke two. Look at it, as we're talking. We just broke 2.6. You're 2.59. Well, it's March 14th. That's your benchmark down there. That now all I've done is a separate correlation, meaning the 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 10 year going up. I took the date, and then this is the other correlation to it. It's 2.02 .02 to 2.14. And uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, that, that does, what, what the bond market is saying is that they're saying that the Fed is going to have to either slow down or do something different because the economy is going to slow down. That's, that's what that rate is actually saying. Uh, you know, we'll see whether, um, which one is right. I'm banking on the 10-year. Uh, doing that ABC structure up. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow. Dow Industrials right now down 18. The Nasdaq's off 15. S&P's off 12 and a half. And I am getting glasses tomorrow, folks. They're on today. Picking them up tomorrow. Thank God. I'll be right back. <laughs> Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar. Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, 
Trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, up 13, NASDAQ's down 6, S&Ps are uh, down 7. And you talk about, you know, we talk a lot about these banks and how much they can pay in fines and just the amount of money these banks make, folks, is just like so over the top. It's insane. So you got Barclays, you know, and, and Barclays, <laughs> they just, uh, they evidently just, they make so much money and blow so much money. So check this out. Barclays, what Barclays had done, right, is this. They made structured notes as well as ETFs. And they sent too many of them out <coughs> to the marketplace. Because what happens is that all securities have to be registered, folks. So the bottom line, somewhere along the line, they, bottom line, did not register these securities and they sent them out. Well, guess what? This is a year and a half later, and now they have to buy all these securities back at the price, picture it, at the price that they sent them out. Now, the biggest winner, listen to this, man, this is sick. The biggest winner, and this is an extreme, there's, not, there's no doubt about it. There was a, now they, <coughs> they're gonna lose over a billion dollars on this deal, just to, you know, because there's so many, they, they did. I, I have, it had to be a total breakdown of compliance, evidently. But listen to this one. For the holders of Peloton notes, Peloton notes, okay, when they pushed them out, um, the bottom line is that they weren't supposed to push them out. And these notes have gone from $1, guess what, to what? Eight cents. And they're going to have to pay the note holders back $102. Well, a dollar two. That's a dollar two point one. That's that's what's so needless to say, those note holders are so happy they can't see straight. Now, this is so I've never seen anything like this. Not with this many anyway, because listen to this. There's three thousand securities that are affected by Barclays the rescission offer that was flagged in March. They, the bottom line is that the bank realized that it had sold, listen to this, this is crazy, man. They've sold billions of worth of securities, more than it had registered for sale with the Security Exchange Commission. Bottom line, you know, I, I mean, how does that work? How, how, how do you push out, not, I would just, yeah, how do you push out 3,000, the 3,000? Yeah, 3,000 securities, you know, without, I, I, it's, it's really bizarre. I'm telling you, but can you can you can you imagine, um, you know, bottom line being on one of those sides? Yeah, no. And the question uh, and bitcoins are not registered. And the, oh, let's talk about that for a second, because what 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 just happened actually when I just got on the air. Let me pull this back, because the Attorney General of New York just came out. We were we were talking not about this, but I, I was we were talking upstairs about the aspect of. Um, you know, the, 
most of the people that were into, I don't know, if, anyway, it seems that most of the people that were into Bitcoin were novices. That's the reality. You had plenty of pros that were taking people to the cleaners. Um, and the bottom line is that, uh, so picture this. The SEC has said a thousand times, okay, that guess what? These, these are illegal. Now, no one paid attention to them. That's the bottom line. Now, I, I can understand, you know, really, you know, folks that are out in the marketplace 20, 30 years old, I, I can understand that. Because, meaning, I can't picture that all of them thought they're sending money into a platforms and there wasn't some kind of, like, regulation that, you know, that they just at least get their money back. Okay? But the bottom line is, is that they didn't, they won't, and... It really comes down to the fact is that how did how did people think that you could make 15 or 13 percent on your Bitcoin on a, on a continual basis? Um, who's paying for it? But the bottom line is that what we're going to see now is after the fact that, you know, these attorney generals in different states are going to basically be going after companies that have no more money. <laughs> so it's like, OK, th this went down the deep hole. Uh, what I do expect you'll probably see, though, um, it, it was a question, does Bitcoin meet the definition of a security? There is definitely tokens that meet the definition of a security. And, and specifically what that is, is this, folks, okay? A security is that they've been selling these tokens, and they sell the tokens to get a company going, Okay. That's a security, man. That's, that's the bottom line. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than that, okay? If you're raising money to put into a company, that's a security. That's what it comes down to. Now, this got so big that it was almost like, oh, it's got to be okay because there's so many platforms that do it. And so, I mean, actually, when they were going bankrupt left and right, I didn't know half those companies that went bankrupt. But they were, they were going BK with 350, 500 million of everyone's money. And the amazing part is that they could actually use your money when you're on the platform to gamble. And that's what they were doing. That's the bottom line. That, you know, when you take a look at some of these stories, they were using customers' deposits to gamble. You know, to, to give to another firm to hope that they could make more money. And guess what? Uh, as soon as Three Arrows went south, the bottom line, Three Arrows brought everything down. Um, so, bottom line is that uh, there's going to be a lot of bread lost. Well, there's a lot of bread that is lost, period. Let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here this morning. Uh, this afternoon, rather, we got uh, Advanced Micro is up two dollars. You got Apple down eighty cents. Carnival's down fourteen. You got uh, Nvidia up two eighty seven. Uh, Tesla's up two dollars. That gave up a lot of bread, man. That just gave up about thirty five bucks. We have uh, Roku is up six dollars. That's after getting smoked down twenty twenty percent last week. You get Comcast flat. Uh, Google is. Uh, down a buck, we have uh, Google, yeah, Google's down a buck. We go take a look at the uh, small caps. So small caps out here. Okay, this looks actually pretty good, man. So this will be interesting. You know, the small caps. Now the the IWM has volume. Had volume Friday. Has volume today. Now, you're coming into, yeah, it's not bad. You're coming into 41 million, you're only done 20. But it's consistent the last couple of days, whereas the NDX and the SPY isn't. That, in both of those, you have a big contraction of volume out here today. So it just depends where you close. You know, we did 57 million or 41 right now in the queues, and that actually is slowing down versus speeding up. But you might get a couple of big orders at the close. And on the SPY, we on Friday you were at 87 million or at 55 today. That's a big slowdown too. There's no doubt about that. So, uh, and it got over the high. It got over the high of the. If we hit 413.41, 413. Oh, yeah, 413.03. Because so it's in a subtle way, but it looks like that the spy is going to fail. We'll see whether the, it doesn't look to me like the queues are going to fail. They won't have the volume, but it looks like they're going to hang over that price. Dow, Dow Industrials right now 
up 12, Nasdaq's down two, S&P's off seven, we'll come right back. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrials right now uh, trading... Uh down 21, Nasdaq's off 27, S&P's off 12 and a half. You take a look at Apple, man. Apple, uh, <laughs> Apple not only has more cash than just about anyone in the marketplace, but guess what? They're going out to the market uh, today to get more cash because they're going out with 5.5 billion of bonds uh, to basically fund buybacks and dividends. So. Uh, pretty amazing. They still think money's cheap, evidently. So uh, for them, it is. Uh, they, they, so picture this. The longest portion, they have a 40-year security that is going to, let's see, WB, this is going to be, so this is going to be, they're paying 118 basis points. So that's 1% plus 0.18 over 2.5. So you got that 3.68. 3.68. <laughs> now, this is, this is, there's no doubt, man. If you can do this, we'd all like to do this. You're paying 3.68% to take out money for 40 years. Now, just as, you know, something you always want to remember, folks, okay, that numbers always go higher. Always. It doesn't, you know, we will, well, you know, they, they talk about, you know, inflation. Yeah, they're, they're, 
gone exponential. But all you have to do is take 2%, 2%, and compound 2%, okay? And the bottom line, you know, every 40 or 50 years, you're really 10 times to 12 times higher than the number you had prior to that. And, you know, that, that's also one of the main reasons that when you look at markets, the bottom line is that that number is normally higher over the course of time, because that's just how numbers go. And that's important to understand. Apple certainly understands it, because the bottom line is that, could you imagine when they're going to pay back that money uh, in the course of uh, 40 years? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, well, right now, that would be, that, so right now, so check that out. Right now, that would be saying that you're, lend, you're borrowing money at a negative interest rate because the way that you do it, you take your interest rate that you're paying and you take the inflation rate. Bottom line, that's a negative rate, man. Yeah, wild. Always remember, folks, the bank can claw your heart out, the bull can run you over, and thank God, there's always another trade. Have a great one. Have a safe one. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Big week out here. Kicks us off 9 in the morning. Look at him, folks.